Welcome back. It's time now for our three stock lunch. Uh, we're trading some of the movers of the day. And one of the biggest is Dollar General. Uh, shares are up 9% after they've been upgraded to a buy over at Gordon Haskett, saying uh, their latest leadership change could help stabilize the business. Victoria Green is back with our trades. And, uh, you know, th this is the real news. Victoria, see, how many companies are, at this point are turning to an old CEO to try to save and bail them out of the new problems they're having? Do you like right. the stock here in this move? I don't. I'm a sell the rip here, and I'm a sell on this stock. Look, he already was on the board. He was the old CEO. He knows there are substantial problems there. What is he going to do about the inventory buildup? What is he going to do to reduce shrink? They already had rising costs, lower in-store traffic. And so I think he has real problems he's going to have to fix. And it may not be an easy turnaround in this quarter. They already had a really nasty quarter. Last, last quarter where they had to downgrade expectations. And so I think this is just an uphill climb. I think if you, if you get a chance today, I'd be kind of more selling this rip than I am uh, because I think it's going to be a slower turnaround. And, and his consumer base is really what I'm worried about. They're showing a lot of stress. The under $500,000, which is the vast majority of their shoppers, is just a little stressed right now. Hard for a CEO to change that. Yeah, let's talk about Delta Airlines stock down a little bit today. Profits up nearly 60% in a record third quarter. That's because of strong summer travel. Also, though, trimmed its free cash flow estimate for the year to $2 billion, down from the $3 billion it forecast over the summer. You don't like to see that kind of forecast coming, do you? No, and that for me is a sell again. And, and, and Delta just is facing higher fuel costs. They had a pretty bad run of it there with maintenance taking longer, higher costs in general. And so the downgrade didn't necessarily surprise me on their earnings. Uh, but they, look, I think they're, if you look at their stocks chart, they're in this horrible downtrend. I think they may have to retest that 3150 hmm. before they catch a bounce. All their summer travel, a lot of that margin was built on European travel. Those are the higher fare mixes. And you typically see a little bit less of that in the seasonal travel here because maybe Americans travel a little bit more domestically. Yeah. You go back, if we could put that uh, chart back up with the three, I think it was three months maybe. That was a very yeah. telling chart, down a lot it, over the past It's almost months. straight down, yeah. fairly, uh, fairly yeah. not from, a from good chart. From nearly 50 now and down it, 34, it had 20. been straight up. I mean, if we expanded that another three months, I remember back in the yeah. spring, Delta had been on a 16-day win streak. Yeah. What is going on with the psyche of the market where it takes Delta on almost its longest win streak ever and then sends it directly back the other way? They mess with the sky miles. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but it's, it ain't just them. I think the airlines have probably traded more or less as a group here. They do. And, and investors have just been burned so many times by airlines. I think that's one of the problems now is Nobody really trusts them to continue to do profitability. Have a great quarter. Great. What are you going to do for me now? And the concerns with them kind of trimming profit forecasts. Investors are looking and saying, OK, well, maybe this isn't sustainable. Maybe this 13, 14 percent margin isn't sustainable with rising fuel costs. Exactly. So, so they look at it and say that was great. But mm, thank you. No, I do feel bad. I mean, no one could have foreseen that jet fuel yeah. would really pop the yeah. way that it has. I, I, I don't know whether it was Warren Buffett, but it may have been Warren Buffett. If it wasn't, I apologize, Mr. Buffett. But I believe he said that more money has been lost in airlines than it, and has ever been made in airlines. And was and it so Munger? who said if he had been there at Kitty Hawk, he would have shot the plane out of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like him. Was, Sounds either, like him. Either him or Warren. Yeah. Our final name is United Health, which is higher after topping earnings estimates in Q3 and raising full-year guidance as they say medical costs are beginning to stabilize here. What would and you do with this stock? This is a buy for me. United Health is one of my favorite stocks right now. They're just a quality company. Q3 has historically been a great quarter for them. Uh, in about a month, they usually do a conference and they'll announce their 2024 guidance. So many people were worried about medical costs and what that was going to do. And they actually came in better, beat it by about 84 bips on their medical loss costs. Uh, and they, they've seen Optum, Optum RX. They've got good Medicare. They've got good corporate uh, uh, penetration in there. And so their EPS outlook is looking stronger. And for us, we look at the stock and say, I think it's a stock on the rise. They always have a little bit of political risk that there could be changes coming down the road. But right now, you've got a lot of gridlock. So for, for now, it looks like uh, quid pro quo on, on any kind of Medicare or Medicaid update. That said, we were talking a moment ago about how how nothing in this market is really working the way you would expect. A lot of the defensive trades have been terrible. Healthcare, to quote Jared Holtz, who covers the space for Mizuho, he said, healthcare equities have never traded this terribly. And you kind of run the gamut. Now, the weight loss drugs, ironically, are a big part of why. But this is an area that's traditionally seen as defensive. Strategists come on and tell us all the time how they want to be in healthcare right now. But the equities have to start to act better. And maybe UNH can be part of that. Hopefully. And I think you've seen, like, a lot of the medical diagnostics have really struggled. And, and so beyond, pharma is beyond. On Lilly and, and Nova Nordics haven't done as well. And so the, the sector definitely has been a surprise. It usually is a quality sector. But for us, we do think United is best in the managed care insurers. At the end of the day, they can continue to raise their premiums, and you're going to have to continue to pay their premiums. So I see their revenue growth as something that is sustainable, even if we hit a slowdown.